Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're going to talk about three special cases where we've got some special segments dealing with chords, secants, and tangents. So follow along with me, ready? First one says, if two chords intersect inside of a circle, then the products of their segments is equal. So here basically when you're looking at this circle, we see that there's two chords, they intersect in the center of, in, not the center, but inside of the circle rather, and that intersection breaks up each chord into two segments, A and B, and then X and Y. And basically the special situation that happens is that A times B is actually equal to X times Y. So when two chords intersect, the segments that are created from when it's broken apart the product of those, so if I multiply them together, is equal to the other chord broken apart, those two segments multiplied to each other. The products are equal to each other. So that's going to be pretty interesting to see. The second special case is that when there's two secants, a secant looks like a chord, but it's actually extending past through the circle. If I've got two secants that intersect outside of the circle, then I've got this special situations, situation rather, where the product of the external part of the secant multiplied by the entire secant is equal to the external times the entire secant. So here, what this means is A, this little external part, times the entire length of A plus B would be equal to this external of X times the entire secant of X plus Y. So those two products. So here, Chords intersecting have two products equal. Here, secants are a little different because it's the external part multiplied by the entire length is equal to the external part multiplied by the entire length. The last one is when you've got a tangent. Now remember, a tangent means it's a line that touches the circle at one point. It's also perpendicular to the radius. A tangent would be a special case because you're not gonna have a tangent cutting through like a secant would, touching the circle twice touches the circle once, but it's kind of just like the previous special situation. It would be the external of A times the entire length of A plus B, but since the tangent is the external already plus the entire length, then that value is just multiplied by itself. So here you can see I have the tangent times the tangent, so tangent squared really, is equal to the external times the entire length. So let's take a look. Here, these are the chords that intersect within a circle, inside of the circle. So the way I would do the first one is I would be able to say that five times X, so these two segments together, is equal to the other two segments multiplied, okay, eight times four, which then becomes five X equals 32, divide both sides by five, and we get 6.2 as our answer. Pretty simple. Now the next one, we just have to be a little extra careful. So it's about where these two chords intersect each other. So if I'm told that I've got a radius of five and I know it's a radius because I have my center marked, then if this length is five, then this entire length is five. If this little segment here is two, then this segment here would be three. So this entire segment of where the two chords intersect each other would be eight times two. And also what we have to know, we learn, if a chord is perpendicular to a radius, and that means that this chord is bisected. So if this is x, then this is also x. So here's what's gonna end up happening. It's eight times two is equal to x times x. That ends up giving us 16, and the square root of 16 is four. Let's try the next one. This would be three times x, and then two times x plus four. This becomes a really basic equation to solve, and we end up getting x equals eight. Last one, same idea. Eight times six is equal to three x times four x. Now in this case, we get 48 equals 12 x squared. We divide both sides by 12 and then take the square root and x is equal to two. Pretty good. Okay, the next two, let's see. So we've got the external and then the entire length. And so we have to just be very careful with that. So it's the external times the entire length is equal to the external times the entire length. So here it would be five times the entire length of five plus nine. Now I'm writing five plus nine there. Of course, it's gonna be 14. If you wanted to skip the step of writing five plus nine, please do. But in the other case, we have to make sure we write it out. So it's four times four plus X. 
4 plus x is how you would call that entire secant. We start to do our math. We distribute our 4 over here on the right. We end up getting 70 equals 16 plus 4x. Subtract 16 on both sides, divide by 4, and x is equal to 13.5. Let's do the same thing here. So it's the external times the entire length. So x times x plus 10 is equal to 3 times 3 plus 5. Distribute that out. We then have x squared plus 10x equals 3 times 8, which is 24. Got a polynomial equation here, guys. So remember, first step in solving a polynomial equation, this is from algebra 1, set the equation equal to 0. Step 2, factor. This is a trinomial. Think about what factor pairs multiply to get negative 24 that add up to get 10. It's not 4 and 6. It's 12 and negative 2. Then remember, you get two solutions. x plus 12 would get you negative 12 as an answer. x minus 2 would give you positive 2 as an answer. But I'm going to box the positive 2 because think about it. You can't have a negative length. So negative 12 actually isn't part of the answer. It's just 2. Let's take a look at the last two problems here. So this is also the same idea. It's the external times the entire length is equal to the tangent squared because it's really just the tangent times the tangent. You don't have an external and the full length. They're the same thing. So this would be 3 times 3 plus 9 is equal to x times x. So then I end up with 3 times 12 equals x squared, which is 36. Square root is 6. Comes a pretty easy problem. Let's do the same thing like this last one. So it's 5 times the entire length of 5 plus x equals 10 times 10. This becomes 25 plus 5x equals 100. Let's solve for x, subtract 25, divide by 5, and we get x equals 15. I hope this video was very easy for you to follow along. Thank you for watching.